Students, what's going on? My name is Pastor Kendall. Thank you for joining us on this virtual experience. I just want to let you guys know, the, my favorite time of the year is coming up. We just came out of Thanksgiving, so I know you probably had plenty of food. I'm sure that you ate great stuffing, dressing, um, macaroni and cheese. I'm still not sure if that's a side dish or maybe that's like a, 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 a built full course meal. I don't know what it is. You go to certain restaurants and it's a side dish, but then you go and it's a main dish. It's confusing. But anyway, I hope you're full and I hope you're ready for the Christmas season and it's beginning to feel and look a lot like Christmas. I love Christmas. I love the smell of Christmas, like the peppermint and going to Bath and Body Works and picking out my favorite candle. Like I love all those different things. I love to look at the houses and the lights. Um, I remember driving um, through the neighborhood to my kids and their eyes just brighten up when they see all the different houses and the decorations. I love to take the time to decorate the tree. Like that's my favorite family tradition. Decorate the tree and you know you're the MVP if you get to put the star at the top of the tree. Like you know you are the MVP of the family. I never got to do that. My sister always got to do that so I'm feeling a little salty about that. But anyway, you just know when you put the star at the top of the tree, you're ready for Christmas. And I don't know about you, but my mom, she would do it like right after Thanksgiving. And so right after Thanksgiving, you know, it was like Black Friday. And so all the sales were going on and you had a lot of different fun. And so we would write our list. Everything that we were wishing for for Christmas, we would write our list Thanksgiving night. We would eat our food and then me and my sister would go to our room while my dad was watching like the Dallas Cowboys game and we would write out this list. And I would have like 10 to 20 different things on this list. I would have the shoes that I wanted. I would have the latest toy. I would have the electronics. I would have um, whatever it is that was the hottest thing out that year. I would have it on my list. It was my wish list and I just knew that Santa Claus was gonna come through and he was gonna bring it to me every single year. And now I do the same thing with my kids. So now my kids write down their list and I go shopping for everything that they want and, I, and whatever they are wishing for and, and are hoping for and are dreaming for. And I remember this one particular year for me was I was wishing and hoping for a PlayStation 2. Yes, I know y'all in all these new PlayStations and all these different things, but I was wishing and hoping for a PlayStation 2. And I was like, man, if I can just get this, I will be the, it will be the house to come to. I will have all the friends, all these different things. And I was like, I just can't wait, can't wait. Well, Christmas morning comes, I'm opening up all my different gifts, and I'm, I'm grateful for them. I'm like, man, these are some nice shoes. Man, this is some cool toys. Man, thank you um, for um, you know, all the different things that you got me. But I didn't see my PlayStation 2. And I begin to get a little disappointed because it's the only thing that I really was wishing and hoping for. And maybe you know what that feels like to really be hoping for something or really be wishing for something and it just doesn't happen. Like, I know that feeling. So my parents were basically playing a trick on me and I didn't know. So the entire morning goes by, and now my dad is watching um, some, some uh, basketball, and he comes in in the middle of the game with this big red box. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, we're done opening up gifts. What, 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 what is this? And I look inside, and it is my PlayStation 2. Guys, it was the best day of my life. And we're going to be kind of talking about like what it looks like to wish for something or what it looks like to hope for something. Those are two different things, but I think sometimes we use the words interchangeable like, oh, I wish that I had the nicest jeans or the nicest shoes or the, the best friends or I hope that I have um, a good high school career and I go on to play in college. Like we use those words like they're interchangeable, but there's really a big difference between wishing for something and hoping for something like hoping is one of those tricky words. And maybe you don't hope for many things because you kind of have a fear of the future. Where you're just kind of like, I don't really want to hope because I don't know what my future holds. I'm just trying to make it through high school. I'm just trying to make sure that I have good grades. So I really don't want to hope for um, all the schools that I'm going to get into because it, it's kind of intimidating for me. Or maybe there's another thing that you think about. Maybe things in your life are not just going well. So to hope for something, it just reminds you of how many things in your life is really going bad. So you're saying, I really don't even want to wish for something. I really don't even want to hope for anything because it just reminds me of everything else around me that's not going well. And maybe that's you because in certain times in my life, that was also me too. 
And maybe you just say, I think it's pointless to hope for anything because God's going to do what he wants anyway. So what's the point of hoping for anything? What's the point of wishing for anything? But there's a big difference between hoping and wishing. Wishing for something to happen, you just make a wish and that's it. You make a wish. I made a list, a Christmas list, and I just had to hope that my parents got it. But when you hope for something, there's action that has to go along with that hoping. So our definition for the day for hope is hope is the true belief that your future can be better than your now and that you have a role to play in it. That's what hope is. Hope is simply this, that you have a true belief that your future, the future days, that those days um, that they're going to be better than what's going on right now in your life and action you have a role to play in it. Each one of us have a role to play in what's going on in our life. The future um, that, that's ahead of us, we can actually have an impact in our future by having a hope. By having a hope, having not a wish, but a hope. When you make a wish, oh, I wish my future would be great, you just wish for it and just wait for it to happen. But when you have a hope, you take the opportunity and you go after whatever it is that you want to do. I want to be a doctor when I grow up, so I have a hope to be a doctor, so that means that I have to study to show myself approved in order to be a doctor. I want to be a great basketball player. Well, that means I have to practice. I can't just wish to be a basketball player, but I have to hope for it. And when I hope that I'm going to be a big ba- a great basketball player is because now I'm putting in the work. And so whatever I'm hoping for, I can affect in my future and maybe it'll come to pass. But you have to do an action when you have hope for something. So that's actually what we're going to be talking about in the Bible, because there were some people in the Bible that lost hope. They lost hope and they were hopeless. They've been through a lot of different tests and trials and they've been out in the wilderness and they have just been hoping for someone to save them. And I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I felt that way, that I just hope for something good to happen, hope for something to change. I don't like what's going on in my life, so I hope that this thing can change. I don't wish for it to change because that means I have no action, but I hope for it to change. And there's a guy in the Bible by the name of Jeremiah, and he was a prophet. And prophets in the Bible were the people that God used in order to uh, get his message out. So if he wanted to tell the people um, something, he would use he would use a prophet. So he would tell the prophet the message and the prophet would take it to the people. And so that's exactly what happened here with the people of um, Israel. Right. So Israel now was in two different kingdoms. There was a northern kingdom, which was named Israel. And then there was a southern kingdom, which was Judah. Um, Yeah. So Judah. And so Jeremiah was the prophet to bring the message to the people. And here's what Jeremiah said. Despite everything that they were going through, despite being out in the wilderness, despite all the hard um, tests and trials that they were going through. Here's what Jeremiah said. He said there. Uh, He said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. And so David was the king at the time. Right. So he said, I would have a, a, a righteous branch sprout from David's line and he will do what is just and right in the land. And then it goes on and says, in those days, Judah will be saved from Jerusalem and will uh, and will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. So let's break it down just for a second. So Jeremiah is telling them, don't give up hope. There's going to come a day where there is a true savior, someone that you can trust in. That's what I love about hope, because it's not just. What are you hoping for? But it's who's behind the hope. It's not who. I mean, it's not how, but it's the who. Right. Who is behind the hope? Who are you putting your trust in? Who are you putting your confidence in? Because the truth of the matter is you and I will let everybody else down at some point in life. We will even let ourselves down. So we can't put hope in ourselves. We can't just put trust in ourselves. It's good to maybe trust yourself at times. But if your only hope is in yourself, We're going to let ourselves down at times. So Jeremiah is saying, don't depend on yourself. But he's saying, depend on something that's trustworthy. He's saying, there's going to come a day, declares the Lord. So that means that the Lord was giving them promises. So let's pause for a second. 
they can choose to obey this promise. They can choose to trust this promise because they know who the promise is coming from. It's coming from the Lord, someone that can't lie, someone that can't let you down, someone that never leaves you, never forsakes you. It's coming from the Lord. So it's a word that is trustworthy. Right. And the same way that there were promises back then, there's promises today. God has promised to guide us through whatever it is that we're going through. God has promised to love us no matter what it is we do because we were created in his image. God has also promised to be faithful to us. He's promised to be faithful to us. God has promised us wisdom, wisdom. God says that we can be wise and God has also promised us peace. He is the peace that surpasses all understanding. You're going to learn more about that next week. But God has also promised to uh, that we belong to him and our heavenly father. So there are promises that we can hold on to as well. The scripture and the Bible is full of different promises that God has promised. And so the same way that we can trust is the same way that these people can trust that whatever uh, was promised declares the Lord is going to come to pass. But it's not about how much you wish for it. You can wish all day long for it to happen. You can beg and plead and, and pray. But if you don't have trust and you don't have faith and you don't have hope, those are three things that you need to make sure that you are trusting God to know that it's going to happen. And what I love about it is we get to play a part in this thing. We get to play a part of what we hope for. So wherever there is not hope, in your life, I challenge you to bring the hope. Be a part, be the hope that you want to see in this world. In this holiday season, I challenge you to hope for peace and bring the peace. I challenge you to be the hope that somebody else needs. Maybe there's a friend that you know that they may not get the best Christmas gifts. Maybe they're hoping for someone to help them out. Maybe you're the person that God is sending in their life to be the difference maker, because the same way that um, the, the, the people of Israel were expecting um, a, a change in their life. Maybe there's a friend that's expecting a change in their life and they've been praying for it and maybe they've been asking for it and maybe they've been hoping for it. But maybe you are the person that God is sending to show them love in this holiday season. And I just want to challenge you. Take the challenge. Be the hope that you want to see. So how do we apply this to our life? Two questions. The first question is, who has who have you been putting your hope in? Has it been yourself? Have you been trusting yourself with every part of your life where you just feel like you're like kind of like me, like a control freak? You have to control every little thing about it. And you've been putting your hope in yourself and I hope I get I can do this well or I wish that this happens in my life or I wish that this would happen. Whatever it has. Has it been that for you? Has it been a hope in someone else? Maybe it's your parents. I just hope that my parents one day, um, you know, I hope they get back together. Or maybe I hope that I find a boyfriend or a girlfriend or I hope that I get into college. What have you been truly putting your hope in? And that's the question that I want to ask you. And I want to ask you to ask yourself that question. What have you been putting your hope in? And then the second question is, what would it look like if we put our hope in God? What would it look like if everything that God has promised us in the Bible, what would it look like if we trust God's word? What would it look like if we play our part of what God is trying to do in this world? What would it look like if our hope is in Christ Jesus? The same way that these people were looking for better days, the same way that they can have confidence because the word of God cannot lie. And God sent a prophet to tell them that days, better days are coming. I want to encourage you. Better days are also coming for you as well. You can have confidence. You can have a belief. You can have trust and you can have hope in Jesus Christ. He would never leave you. He would never forsake you. But my challenge to you is. Be the hope that you want to see in this world. Go out. The number one way that you can make a difference this Christmas season for someone else is whatever it is that they're hoping for. You can be the solution. Let's pray about it. Heavenly Father, God, thank you. God, thank you that we can have confidence in you.
God, even in times where we may feel like we're in the wilderness and we may feel like we don't know what's coming next. We don't know how you're going to protect us or how you're going to provide for us. God, we thank you that we can have trust and hope in you, God. And we don't just wish for things to happen. So though we don't just pray and put the prayer out there like you're a genie in a, bi- uh, in a bottle, God. But we put hope and trust in you, knowing that we can have confidence because your word never lies. You have never let us down and you never will. God, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for sending your baby son, Jesus, to be born, to live a perfect life and to die for our sins. It's in your son, Jesus name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Hope that you have a great holiday.